Hey, it's Andrew here, and today I want to make a quick video explaining how we can safely and securely hash and store passwords and other sensitive information as web developers. Really quickly, if you don't know what hashing is, it's cryptographically securing some text and performing a one-way transformation on it in order to provide security in case anyone gets access to your database or wherever you're storing your data. It basically turns human readable strings of text into gibberish, so we can't actually see what the value is, but we can verify against it in order to validate passwords and so on. Now, a really important aspect of hashing is the hashing function. The hashing function is the specific function or algorithm that turns the input of data into a secure hash. Unfortunately, as hackers get smarter and technology becomes faster, hashing functions eventually become out of date or obsolete because they produce hashes that are too vulnerable to use. Because of this, smarter people than me are constantly researching and developing new hashing functions that are more secure. Today in this video, I want to talk about the argon2 hashing function. Argon2 is pretty widely accepted as one of the best hashes available today. It won the password hashing competition, or the PHC, and is now their official recommendation for password hashing. Now before argon2 came around, bcrypt was kind of the standard to use. And I think bcrypt is still pretty secure, so if you've heard of bcrypt or you use bcrypt, I would say you're fine. However, if you really want to make an emphasis on security and really care about protecting the information that your users are trusting you with, then argon2 is something that you should at least be aware of, if not implementing it. Really quickly, related to argon2, there are three different versions called argon2i, argon2d, and argon2id, which is the hybrid of 2 I and 2D. Now I'm not going to get into the complexities of the differences between these types, but what you should know is that the time and memory cost are different for each type, and certain types are better for certain uses. If you want to know more about the specifics, I'll have a link down to this Argon2 repository, which has the official documentation. For our specific case of pas password hashing, Argon2ID is the best solution in this case because it has the best trade-off of time and memory cost. Okay, now that we have the background of why we're gonna use Argon2, let's create a quick little example that will demonstrate Argon2 with Node.js. Um, and Argon2 has bindings for every major language out there, so we can do this in pretty much any language we choose. I'm just gonna create a simple program that accepts a password, accepts a password, hashes it, and then asks for the password again, and tries to verify it against the hash. I'm using the Node Argon2 package and it's very easy to use, but it does also allow for more specificity if you're interested in that. But for now, I'm just going to be using it out of the box except for one customization. And I'll explain that later on. Um, just a side note, also when using this library, um, this library is implemented natively in C++. So if your system is below a certain requirement level, there's a chance you'll have to do extra steps to manually build the binaries and the source code. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but... Um, this package and the documentation, they recommend that you always build from the source code anyways, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the package as is. Okay, now let's get our project set up. So I'm just going to create a quick project called argon2, and I'm going to do npm init-y. Now we have a quick directory with npm initialized. So I'll need two modules in this Quick little application, obviously argon2, so I'm just going to do npm install argon2. And the other module I'll need, oh, that actually didn't find it. Oh, so I see that the problem is it can't install argon2 because it's the same name as my directory. Okay, so I've renamed our project name in the package.json, and if we try to install that again, this time it should work. Okay, inside this directory, I'm going to create a file called hash.js, and this will be the only file that we'll need. So the other module we'll need is the built-in Node.js readline module, and that's so we can ask the user for prompts and get data from the console. So let's require both of these packages. So now let's create our readline instance. So I'm just going to do const rl equals readline dot 
create interface, and this takes an object, and we need an input, which is a standard input stream. Um, actually, let me look at the documentation quick. Yeah, so input is process dot standard input, and the same for output is process dot standard output stream. And now we'll ask the user for their first prompt so we can say readline.question and we're just going to have them enter their password. And this readline.question method takes in a callback so that you can use the data that the user has entered. Um, and we actually want to make this an asynchronous callback because the argon2 library is asynchronous. So in order to hash it and to verify it, we'll have to use the await command. I'll hide the sidebar so you can see a little better. And this read line structure is pretty simple. It's pretty basic. And if you're not familiar with it, you can read up on it on Node.js's official documentation. So now what do we want to do with the password once the user has entered it in? Well, we want to hash it. So it's really easy, like I said, using this module. So we just will have our hash set to a constant. And we want to say argon2.hash. And pass in the password. And I mentioned earlier that we want to make one tweak to this. So this would work out of the box, and that would create a hash, and that would be perfect. But like I said before, we want to use the argon2id hybrid type. So we actually want to pass in some options here. Just one option, say type is argon2.argon2id. There we go. All right, so what do we want to do after that? Well, let's just return the hash and display it to the user. I'm going to use string templates here. OK, perfect. And let's just see if that will work for now. So let's go back to a terminal and just run node hash.js. It's asking for the password. I'm just going to hit password. And there is the hash. And if you're familiar with hashes and salts and stuff like that, a salt is just another level of security. Basically, it's, it's a unique string um, that secures your hash even more. With argon2 ID, the salt is included in the hash already, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but there are options with this package that I'm using that you can manually set it to your own salt if you want to do that. But this is perfect for what we need. Okay, so now after that, let's have the user enter the pas password again. So we'll ask them another question. We'll say, re-enter your password. Again, this will be asynchronous because the argon2 verify method is asynchronous. And we'll just call this pw since we can't have another variable named password. And now to verify against this password, against the hash, we simply do um, argon2.verify. And I'm going to set this to a Variable, be variable because argon2.verify returns a boolean true or false if the password can verify based off the hash. So I'm just going to say const correct equals await argon2.verify. And you can see it takes in the hash first and then the plain string password. So we'll enter in our hash or pass in our hash and then the, the new password that the user just entered in again. And we can return some information back to the user. So we can say simply if it's correct, we can return correct. And if not, we can just say incorrect. And that is simple enough for what we want to do with it. All right, so let's stop this. And actually, after this, I'm just going to call process.exit with the exit code of zero so the program doesn't keep running. All right, so let's try this out. So I'm just going to run node hash.js and enter the password, just call password. 
There's our hash. It's asking to re-enter the password, so I will re-enter it exactly the same again, and it is correct. So that's exactly what we're looking for, and I will clear my terminal here and make this a little bit easier to read. If I do that again, enter the password, but this time enter something else, it's incorrect. So that's exactly what we want to do. Now, if we're talking in a web development context, when a user signs up and creates an account, you would hash the password first and then store that hash in your database. So you would never store the plain text password. And this is pretty effective against attacks because it will not compromise your user's passwords if they get access to your database. But if they get access to your database, you're dealing with other issues as well. So I know that was a quick little example, but hopefully it's helpful to you if you're new to password security or if you're looking for a better hashing function for your application. As always, let me know in the comments if you have any observations or questions. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you want more content. Take it easy, guys.